Hello everyone, John Anderson Pierre with the Beer Ramble back looking at Cote Blanca. Founded in 1890 by the brewery, which I'm going to butcher the name. This is their top brand. Forgive me with my Spanish, but it's horrible. Servicierra, Cuatmaso, Matazuma, in Monterey, Mexico. Of course, now under the guidance of Heineken International. I poured my beer. I bought the big 32-ounce bottle, quart bottle, up in um, Decula, Decula, Georgia. I was visiting my brother. Hey, bro. Hey, sis. So, I said I would do a review of it, and I am now. So, see my beer right over here. I poured it earlier. Very little lacing now on the beer. Not much. On to the scent. Has a scent of some herbalness to it. A little scent of some... Kind of much there, a little bit, not much. A little tea, but but it's not bad. So, on to the drink. My first time having this. I must say it's not bad. 4.5% ABV. Uh, does not get a good score in Beer Advocate. Does not get a good score with the bros. They don't particularly like it much. It has a very comparable flavor. It's nothing like some of the other Mexican beers that I've had. You know, I've had Dos Equis, which also, um, and, and Takata. Uh, are part of that same umbrella. Uh, Bohemia, I have Bohemia too. I've did a review on that. Um, Takata was good. So was uh, Bohemia. I really enjoyed the Bohemia. Bohemia had a very was more of a darker, a little darker beer, but that was very enjoyable. I really liked that a lot. So, so again, first time having this, and and compared to the other Mexican beers too, uh, like. Maybe Pacifico or Corona. Um, Victoria, I, I really liked a lot more. I really liked, I thought um, Victoria was really, really well made and for the ABV, but it seemed like it was a lot more in this. This is 4.5, so. That one. There was, I think it was only 4 or 4.1%, barely 4 for a lager, and that was really good. I really enjoyed that one. Um, this is going pretty easy. A pretty smooth lager, you know. Um, again, this is the founding beer of the company in 1890. Um, I believe, uh, and one of the good things that Heineken International has made sure that all their beers they have picked up are owned or have acquired, have made sure that, you know, we keep the brewery in their respective countries. You know, we're not going to take the breweries out and kind of disappear and have them go other places. And, you know, we're going to keep it at our, our, our facility. And um, we keep it in our facility in, um, in, in Mexico. So, excuse me, folks, I got to go to another room. In a little bit static here. So, anyway, back here, a little more quieter place. Um, this isn't bad at all. Um, um, in terms of pairings, you could pair this with, um, I mean, I mean, anything Latin, 
Uh, but I would say, you know, obviously Mexican food, but anything Latin will go well with this uh, lager. And, and again, the time of year we're in right now, it is so humid wherever you are across the country. Um, it's, um, this is, of course, this, this would be a no-brainer or anything, any lager. Or then again, any a wheat ale, I guess, maybe. But more people tend to drink lagers during the summer when it's extremely hot. Um, yeah, I was able to find this in the kill. And for the size of it, I was able to find. For the price, it wasn't bad. For the price of this beer. Um, uh, we get Carte Blanca here in, um, here in here in our area. I live in Mobile, Alabama. Um, but if you go... Uh, I'm sure this beer is pretty much is everywhere. Distribution is shouldn't be a problem. Um, we only get the 12 ounce, you know, bottles. You know, we don't get the singles and we don't get the cans. I'm sure other territories, other places across the country, will probably get cans, or, or maybe 18 ounce bottles or 40 ounce bottles, 32 ounce bottles was sort of something that I didn't expect to see, you know. And, and again, if you look at areas where there's a lot of sort of groups, as I did with the Corona review, I'll say, when you have a lot of people from a certain eth group or ethnicity or di demographic living in your area, then you're going to get um, those folks buying beers that they know. They want to buy products that they know and familiar with. You know, everything's all about numbers. You know, in this area, we don't, we have a lot of Hispanic beers, many, many of them I mean, Hispanic beers, I should say, beers that are from Mexico or that are from from that part of the world or maybe from Spain or whatever, um, or Dominican Republic. I mean, we get them, but we don't get them in, in you know, consistently. I mean, distribution is starting to get kind of better now, um, you know, here in our state. I mean, we've, you know, it took a long time. I remember, as I told you the story of the malt liquor reviews that I did. Uh, the, the the reviews of the high gravity beers that I did um, that um, 2009 our state finally were able to start selling beer that had an ABV of over six percent um, where other states were you know we're doing it a long time even my home state of New Jersey um, so being what it is you know states are kind of slow to adapt and, and particularly in the South and I was speaking to someone earlier today. We were just chatting on Facebook, um, you know, Tennessee finally and finally got some uh, uh, some beers uh, that they looked at that the ABV is not as, uh, it's like for a certain certain beverage they could get, they can only get the 6%, they can't get the 8% because the state won't, won't allow it. I, I don't know why. And Utah is about that state is the same way. I think beer is under 3.2%. I think they go by weight. Not by volume, but more so by weight in terms of the alcohol. Utah and Kansas, you know, we were just debating back and forth and how, why some people tend to um, go across state lines and to get certain things that they want to get, you know. And when I was up there, I said, I'm going to do some shopping because there's some stuff I cannot get in my home state of Alabama. So I said, why not um, why not Atlanta or the Atlanta metro area or the suburbs of Atlanta and same would be when I go home see my folks up in Jersey I will do that I make sure I'm doing a lot of shopping for me and a lot of stuff that I bought I was not able to get down here for whatever the reason you know the times mean what they are um, a friend of mine had to show the picture of a Bud Light Apple and I said, you know, Bud Light Apple, hmm, that's kind of, what's that? And come to find out they sell it in Pensacola and we haven't gotten it yet here. So, you know, my state and many other states, you know, I'm sure they're like this. They're probably slow with the times. We'll probably get it maybe down the road three years, four years later, even though it's been around. You know, we've all seen pictures of it through our friends on Facebook or Instagram or whatever chat group it is with the deals with beer or whatever you know, distribution, but, um, but this beer is very well dis, uh, distributed across, you know, and again, we get it here. Uh, if you go to different grocery stores, I know Publix has it. I know, um, 
you know, in our area, the Mobile County or Baldwin County or the Mobile, you know, area, I guess. But um, I know Publix Supermarket has it. Uh, if you go to a pick, couple of Pickly Wigglies, I know across the across the bay. If you're going I-10 heading towards Daphne in that area. I'm sure that they have it too. Um, the Rouse's supermarkets have it. Um, we, um, I have not seen it at Walmart, and I have not seen it at places like a uh, Whole Food supermarket. Um, but I'm sure they'll probably get it. Someone will request it. Probably will ask for it. But again, they most of these stores, supermarkets, will um, Fresh Market does have it too. Um, and I mentioned Rouse's, but you know, like it is, you know, stores will stock up what they know is going to sell off the shelves. And that's what it comes down to. Whatever that's going to sell, we'll bring it in. If it ain't selling, it's getting the hell up out of here. That's just business the way business is. So anyway, um, very enjoyable beer. And I'm liking it. Again, it's my first time having Carte Blanca. I never had it before. Nothing negative about it. I think it's a very refreshing beer. I'm still surprised by the score that Beer Advocate and the bros would give this. I mean, this is a good sit down with friends type of beer you could bring to a barbecue and just chill and, you know, whatever they're serving off the grill. You know, this this would go well with it, you know, to me. And again, Mexican food, as I mentioned, anything hot and spicy and perfect for the time of year we're in. We're in August. It's freaking humid and why not? So, um, I enjoy this beer. This is really good. I'm going to give this beer a, an eight. This is a B to me. Solid, solid, solid. We can't go wrong with it. So if you've had Carte Blanca, you found it in 1890, and you think it deserves a B score or it doesn't, leave your posts and your thoughts on the bottom. And please, I take all comments, negative and positive. Because I'm a positive person. We all have to be positive. No negativity. The beer world must have joy and love to the world. Anyway, B plus B for Carte Blanca. Sean is beer at the Beer Ramble 10. You keep on watching, and as always, cheers. Salute.